This shader has a shallow bowl shape profile which is significant when you compare it to a flat shader. If a flat shader is tilted slightly when burning a line, one side of that line tends to be darker than the other. This can cause striations through the shaded area. Because of its curved shape, the spoon shader leaves a consistently even edge. This aids in the blending of successive lines when doing shading. When compared side by side, it's easy to see that the large flat shader does have one distinct advantage over the spoon. It burns a much wider path, making it an excellent shader for blocking in broad areas. Because each of these shaders has its own distinct advantage, a case could be made for having one of both in your kit. Another aspect of the spoon shader that I enjoy is its versatility. It can be used much in the same way as a fat writing nib and is able to be pushed and pulled in any direction. Because of this ability, the spoon shader can be used to burn an entire picture without the need of other tips. Because the spoon shader burns a soft, shallow trench, I found this nib is invaluable when building up soft looking animal fur. I essentially use the spoon to burn the animal's undercoat, imparting the basic colour and structure of the fur before adding any sharp top coat hair. When building up the undercoat, I make sure my strokes are slightly askew, overlapping and in proportionate length to the animal's hair. For instance, the strokes on the tiger's nose are very short. On the rough, they are much longer. The rounded base of this shader also allows it to be used as a stippling tool. The burnt blobs can be used as simple decoration or they can be built up in various layers to produce an entire picture. Elephant eye was burnt almost entirely with a spoon shader. The only other tip that was used was a skew which burnt the sharp crease lines. These creases could have also been burnt with the toe of a spoon shader. 